So Ali made a video fairly recently about the Second Brain course that Tiago Forte runs. Ali is an ambassador, a mentor on the course, so he has a lot of views to share. What I want to do in this video is actually dissect the 10 points he made in his video and actually share some opinions, some of my opinions, that don't necessarily agree with what he's done or potentially challenge some of the actions that he does relating to the theory that he spoke about. Borrowed creativity is the first point Ali made in his video, and it's definitely a valid point. Tiago definitely talks about it, and I'm not disputing that borrowed creativity is definitely really important for coaches, creators, entrepreneurs, and students to most extent, because we're looking at other research, we're looking at other people's ideas, other videos, blog posts, etc. However, what I see in practice from what I'm seeing from what Ali's putting in videos and what he's sharing in social media is actually slightly different. So his actions are slightly different from the theory that he talks about. The resonance calendar, which I've seen go all over the place in the Notion community is really, really useful for capturing information, which relates to his second point, the capturing habit. But I think most of us that I'm talking to, most of us realize that capturing is really, really easy. You can easily push the button and clip information into your Notion, into wherever, Rome, Evernote, whatever tool you're using. So capturing information is easy and capturing that information for borrowed creativity, again, is quite easy. But the process of capturing that information goes somewhere and it's stored somewhere. For Ali at the moment, maybe he's changed it, but it goes to a resonance calendar in Notion that may have changed to Rome. But the process of processing those notes for it to be useful that is a process that he left out in his video. Maybe that was deliberate because he doesn't know what his process is or he didn't want to share his process or he shares it somewhere else. I'm not sure, I haven't seen that. But for me, the process of going from capture to storage, there is something in between. It's not just you capture the information and that's it, done. It's just stored in your resonance calendar, in your Evernote notes. There's got to be something from that. And that process that goes to review, there needs to be something in there. For me in Notion, when I clip something or take something, it goes to my notes database. Now, once it's in my notes database, I don't actually do anything with it straight away. I give it some time, one, so that I can process it later on. So maybe that's adding on thoughts that I may have had later on in the day, later on in the week, depending on when I first process the note. But what it also does is it allows me to look at the note and go, actually, is this note worth keeping? Something that I've seen is I'll capture loads of notes, but when I'm going through my notes, a lot of the notes I've made, I either have made already before, or I don't really need them in my, my storage view because borrowed creativity, going on that first point, it's using those points to create something else. But if I've already made something or I've already got ideas around something, why do I need to have another note elsewhere? Why not just combine those notes together in storage to, to form that, that new creative idea or form that thought, that divergent thought away from whatever the original note was? Now, moving on from borrowed creativity and the capturing habit is idea recycling. My thought process behind idea recycling is looking at the end products. So I've gone from idea that I've captured using the capturing habit. I've created something, so borrowed creativity. I've expanded on that using a thought. And then I've created something, whether that's a product, a project, an essay, whatever that process is, it leads to something. And the idea of idea recycling is recycling of those ideas that you've ended up with and bringing them back into that process. So the idea of idea recycling is you go from a note, you've taken the note, whatever that is, you've processed that note through creative thought and ideas and you come out with a, a product, a project, whatever that is. And the idea of recycling that is you bring this idea, this, this product back into the notes and then you can process that through again so you can use new notes, new ideas, new thoughts and expand on that previous product you had. That way you're continually developing your ideas rather than just, that's the answer, that's it, I'm good, and leave it there. Ali and Tiago do that very, very well in a lot of the stuff that they do. They reproduce their content in different mediums over different platforms. So from a content marketing standpoint, it makes total sense. But also from a learning standpoint, from a development standpoint, they're taking ideas and thoughts that they had a week, a month, a year ago, and then going, okay, Let's have a look at this again. Should I just put it out again or should I expand on this? What have I learnt on in this time frame since I made that first post, whatever that is? What have I learnt that I can now expand on from that? 
Now, idea recycling for me, I can post the same thing on different platforms. So on Twitter, I may have a short brief. LinkedIn, I may have a longer brief. YouTube, I may do a video. So I'm looking at the same idea in different ways because different platforms has different mediums of communication. Then once I've made those products, those projects, whatever that is at the end point, what I, once I've made it, I can then look back at it a month, two months time, and then create new content, new ideas, new thoughts about those notes. Now, the next thing Ali spoke about in the video was projects and categories. Instead of categorizing information, categorizing notes, categorizing potentially things that you've captured, you categorize them, but you put projects to them. So in other words, you're giving them an actionable task rather than it just sitting there. Now, I completely agree. I do the same process, but I don't just categorize it using projects. I actually use categories as well, which Tiago talks about areas. So actually having a, a category, an area that something is in, but categorizing the actionable projects on it is how I go forwards with my notes, my capture habits, and all the information that I grab. Looking at this practically in my space, I will grab a note and then from that note, I will create a project, but both that note and that project will be categorized by an area. So I'm not just categorizing the note and I'm not just making a project from the note. I'm actually doing both at the same time. What this allows me to do is see the actionable things that I've done from the note and then I can review that later on. But it also allows me to categorize the projects that I'm doing. So one, it helps me not get overloaded with all the projects I'm doing. And it also helps me plan out all of the different endpoints, i.e. in my case, videos and content. It allows me to plan all of that out ahead of time because I've categorized things together. So using categories and projects, both on notes, allows me to move forwards. In an academic sense, having categories as modules makes total sense. And then as projects for your academic research, that could be an essay, or that could be something that you want to do, something you want to produce from the research that you've read. Slow burns and heavy lifts, to my understanding, are basically the time it takes you to complete a project. Now, I could make a video in one day, and that would be a heavy lift because I'm doing a lot of work in a short amount of time or I could have that over a slow burn, so I could do a video over a week, maybe two weeks. And the bigger the project, the longer potentially that project will take. And if it's a slow burn, it may be, if it's a big project, it may be over a massive amount of time. If it's a documentary, a massive amount of time. Or you could do a heavy lift and do it really, really quickly, but you're likely to get burnt out from my experience. Now for me, what I tend to do is favor the slow burns, mainly because with knowledge and learning, it takes time to understand different concepts, different thoughts, and it takes a process to learn. So I try and make all of my projects slow burns over long periods of time. So I'm recording this video now, but I won't look at this video until what, three days before I've actually like editing it and going through it. So it gives me time to process what I've done and learn from that. I may then change it later on down the line. I don't know at this point. But doing those projects over a longer period of time gives me a time to reflect on what I'm doing. Maybe I want to make a change. Maybe actually it was a good thing and I'm just going to do it. A heavy lift for me is something either you need to do because you're panicking, i.e. essay last minute. I just need to do a massive heavy lift and get all these words done or the deadline has come quicker than you thought, or there's more things to do before the deadline than you thought, which requires a heavy lift. So heavy lifts for me are either triggered by bad planning, a lack of understanding of what the project really entails, or there's been an external factor that you can't control that has changed something with regards to the project. So maybe the due date is moved, or maybe something happens in life that means you have to do that project quicker, and that would trigger the heavy lift. The idea that we all start with abundance, I think is fairly clear because we're always taking in information. We're always learning and experiencing different things. Where I think starting with abundance differences from people like us that we're, we're capturing information and people that don't capture information is we have a larger set to start from because we're capturing all this stuff. But because we're capturing all of this stuff, whether that's useful, whether that's not, depending on that process that I spoke about beforehand, Depending on what stuff you have is going to reflect how you process that information later on and what actually comes out of that abundance of information. 
And to move that thought on a little bit further, because we have an abundance of information, because we capture so much stuff, it actually becomes a hindrance. Because we have so much stuff, we don't potentially know where to start, or it's just daunting to start. Like if you're going to start an essay and you've got 300 articles that you've read with loads and loads of notes on, where do you even start with that? And that for me is where the capturing habit, you can capture it and then you can process it. Do I need it? Do I not need it? Where am I going to put it? Then you can categorize it. So that categorizes the abundance of information, again, reducing it a little bit. And then you can put actionable projects on those notes. So when you start the project, whatever that is, the abundance of information, instead of it being 300 articles, you've actually reduced it by 100 for the category, you've reduced it by 50 because of the actions you need to take. So you have less information to start with. Now, for people that aren't capturing information, you wouldn't want to do all of that because you're not going to have that much to start with. But from my experience, if you have loads and loads of information, it can be hard to start. So I would reduce that information to the specific things that you want to do for whatever project you're going to start. Intermediate packets is an interesting concept that Tiago speaks about and Ali obviously mentioned in the video, but essentially it's packets of information. Now Ali expressed this as paragraphs in an essay that he can move from essay to essay. And I did that very similarly. And with Notion with notes, it's very, very similar in that packets of information because the way I sort my notes is I have a notes page and in that notes page, I have a packet of information and that note page can then be spread all over the place. Whereas in Rome, the packets of information aren't necessarily packets. They are small notes. They're very small notes and the packet potentially becomes the page. But the page could be in its own a project, a product, something that you're going to finish. So I haven't explored Rome enough yet to be able to speak on that, but packets of information, if you can categorize information, which what we spoke about before, and packet them into small little chunks, it makes it easier later on down the line. Now, when it comes to those small packets, is that if you have loads and loads of packets, you have the same issue as with the abundance of information. If you've got loads of packets that you can put into this product, this project, whatever it is, you then go, okay, well, how am I gonna start? Where do I start? All of this stuff is relevant. Where do I even go from here? Where this could be where, for me, in my Notion system, I only have a couple of notes that relate to a project. So I know I only have a couple of pieces of information that I need to use for this project. Can I then go further in and explore those other packets if I want to? Yes, because the relations are there but I'm not thrown all of this information at the same time and goes, there you go, there's a load of stuff because I've decided to reduce that abundance of information. I've reduced the packets of the information for when I'm creating whatever it is I'm doing. You only know what you make is a great point and I completely agree with what Ali said and what Tiago said. However, there is a slight difference in that active recall space repetition, really useful. Creating things and creating products, creating content and everything like that, I think everyone should be doing irrelevant of what vanity metrics you're going to look for. So for example, this video, Loads of people may just go, nah, he doesn't know what he's talking about. He's not going to look at it. But I'm going through notes and I'm learning what I'm talking about as I'm talking about it to you. So I'm creating the content for you. I don't know whether Ali and Tiago would suggest that everyone creates content or creates something, but whether you're creating a blog post, a personal blog post, or you're writing a journal and creating content for yourself from your notes, that is how I would go about creating different things to reinforce your learning and to help understand whatever it is that you've taken down. Because regurgitating information is not really useful, it's not great for learning. I think most people that have got this far into the video will recognize that. But processing the information and explaining the information to either someone that doesn't know it or explaining it to yourself again in different ways can help you retain the information and that's what I do. That is why I write my blog. I didn't do a daily journal. I didn't like daily journaling. It was something that I, it felt like a chore. But now that I journal, I journal with a blog and I blog about my notes, I can then explain my notes in my own words in further detail. So I have all of that capturing information that goes in, the abundance of information. I'm then doing something with it and I'm making a piece of content, whether people watch it, read it, it really doesn't matter. It's the process of learning whatever the note it is that I've taken. That way there's no note that comes into my system that isn't processed and there isn't a purpose for it. 
And the more and more I see people talk about the resonance calendar or just like the idea of capturing notes is great and all, but how do you review it? What do you do with it? What is the point of taking those notes? There's got to be a reason you're taking them, which is creating whatever it is, content, essay, projects, products, whatever. There needs to be a point to taking the note. Making your notes easier for yourself is much easier said than done from my experience, because when you're capturing the note, you want to take every every piece of information that you're seeing. You want to basically put it all down so you can look at it later. But doing that process, just having that, okay, how would I want to see this if I was seeing this for the first time? That is the question I ask myself. Now, when I'm capturing notes out and about, I'm actually talking to them at my phone because I use my voice recorder and then I transfer that into Notion later on. If I'm taking notes in Notion, what I will try and do is just write it as if I have not seen the note and as if how I would want to see it later on. So what I'm actually doing when I'm capturing the note and thinking about the future is I'm capturing the note, I'm processing the note, and then I'm actually creating, because I'm creating the note in my own words, I'm creating a project, a product, piece of content, whatever, I'm creating that note from the note I've actually made. So I actually have a bit of processing in my capture habit. Does that make the capturing process a little bit longer? Yes, but only by 10-20 seconds and I'm pretty sure all of this can take 10-20 seconds to just process that note so later on when we're reading the note we don't sit there and go what was that about and then you suddenly have to google it and find the links and go back to wherever. That 20 seconds saving that capture habit right there saves the time later on where you go okay what was this note about. The tenth thing Ali brought up in his video was about keeping your ideas moving, and this relates to almost everything that I've said during the video, but essentially you have the process of capture, store, and then share. Those three things, capture the information, store the information, and share the information. And as long as you're going through that cycle, because once you've shared it, remember we're going to review it, and then go back through that, that process, as long as you're doing that constantly with all of the ideas, the notes, the contents you have that is relevant to you at the time, then you're going to constantly keep your ideas moving. If you want to hear more about how I've built a system in Notion to replicate the second brain and everything is in Notion, make sure you check out this video over here and I'll see you there.